I am a collection specialist and my name is Joshua Hernandez. I started here September of 2020, so I've almost been here two years. To summarize what I do, I reach out to people who have bills, debt, and I notify them and I do everything in my power to make them aware of our policies and our procedures so that way we can best help them or try to get the ball rolling so that way they know we're like, we're here for them. The one thing that I would look forward to in this job is every day it's different. You have no idea what you're going to experience and I've worked here for quite a while and it's seem to be correct every day it's never the same i would say that we're kind of just overall kind like we just understand and we kind of just do the best we can and we're always helping each other out so we're always very friendly yes i would definitely recommend people coming in working for nar Early October snow gave a nice bump to sun and ski sports, according to manager Patrick Murray. But now, of course, with the temperatures moderating and the warm weather, we've definitely seen a dip in business. Park City Mountain is yet to announce their new opening date, but Murray says the sooner the better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the sooner we could get ski business rolling, I mean, you know, the white gold, that's why we're all here. It's what makes Park City roll. Um, no question. While ski sales and rentals may slow without snow, for Red Banjo, a pizza place on Park City's Main Street, owner Tyler Tolley says they could actually be busier. If there's not a lot of snow, the mountain resort um, for Thanksgiving, it tends to be busier on Main Street. If people can't ski, they're probably shopping or eating. Doing the other things that Park City has to offer. And Tolley says Thanksgiving tends to be a popular time to come to Park City. He was in a Business Alliance board meeting today and the outlook seems strong, snow or no snow. The numbers for hotel occupancy is like 80 to 85 percent. People are coming and still booking rooms, so yeah, it'll be busy. While the lack of snow might not be as good for Murray, he isn't too worried yet. I'm cautiously optimistic. It's maybe a little early to panic, but we're hoping for the best. After dark, the flames lit up the west side of Kaysville and Farmington, the legacy fire keeping firefighters on guard and neighbors on edge. And when you see flames that are 30, 40 feet high and the wind blowing them towards your house, it is a little scary. People on the west end of Davis County saw smoke, then flames around 2.30 after lightning sparked the fire. It started out as just this little spot out there and, you know, black smoke and, yeah, it just went crazy. The plume of smoke could be seen from all over the Wasatch Front. It's just pitch black and everybody's going really slow. Fire crews had difficulty accessing the flames that were raging through the marshland of Farmington Bay. By 6.30, the fire had run east, pushing up against a sewer plant and causing explosions along the high voltage power lines. Firefighters hooked up hoses to fire hydrants just in case they needed to start protecting homes up close. And for a while, it looked like they were going to need to because wind had caused the smoke to overtake neighborhoods. But then a storm cell dumped rain on the fire. Since the rain has stopped, I've seen the fire grow immensely. The flames kicked back up, but the rain broke the fire up enough to give some relief to fire crews and the people hoping these flames didn't get any closer. I just don't want to see it reach the homes.